that's loud, yeah. Good morning. Let's go ahead and find our seats and uh, let's get started. While you're getting seated, I want to invite or rather welcome everyone that's here this morning. Glad you can make it to worship with us and hear from God's word a little later on. And also those of you that may be watching online, uh, we want to welcome you as well. In case you don't know me, my name is Roy. I'm with the Children's Ministry. And I just wanted to mention or remind you all. Woo, thank you. It is a good ministry to be involved with. Amen. Amen. Uh, just a reminder, our services are live on Facebook. But if you would like to go back and see a replay of them later on during the week or even weeks later, you have to go to YouTube and uh, go to Covenant of Grace Phoenix. And there's a bell there. If you click on the bell, it will send you notifications when new services are available to listen to. So let's open up with a word of prayer and we're going to get right to it this morning. Is everybody ready? Yes. You know, yesterday I was kind of relaxing a little bit. Something came to my mind. I was thinking, whenever we have company over, and I know we all do, we all like to entertain, or at least we do entertain. Maybe some of us like it more than others. Don't we prepare our home? Don't we clean and make sure everything is, is looking pretty good? And the ladies doing the meals, cooking the food. You might prep early in the week getting the food. Do we do that preparing to come to the Lord's house? Something to think about. Father God, we just lift our hands to you. We just thank you for this beautiful day you've given us, Lord. We're so excited about praising you and giving you the glory that you deserve. For your name is above all names. Your name is on high. Father, just we invite the Holy Spirit to be here. Our Lord Jesus told us that the Holy Spirit would be our helper, and he sent him. Father, we just pray, and I beg that it would be here this morning, that the Holy Spirit would be present. So as we worship, there would be healings, there would be wisdom, there would be comforting. All in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you. Amen. There is a spiritual battle going on. And so I invite everyone to put on the armor of God. Amen. Put on the boots, put on the shoes, put on the shields. We've got to put it all on today. Because we're going to battle, a spiritual battle. Amen. And this first song is going to be the one that knocks down the devil. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's praise the Lord.
one more time, because I think some of us are still asleep in here. We gotta do it one more time. We gotta do this. All together. Come alive. Wake up.
want to declare that one more time. Sin has lost its power. We know that positionally in Christ, amen. But I want to tell you, sin has lost its power in you. Do you understand that? Do you know that that's what the Word of God says about you? You may not feel that way, and you may not look that way, and you may not act that way, but it is a settled, accomplished fact. Purchased at Calvary and affirmed through the resurrection of Jesus from the dead. Sin has lost its power. Death has lost its sting. Through the cross you've risen. Victoriously. Sin has lost its power. Death has lost its sting. saying positionally if you don't feel like you are able to acknowledge and pursue him what I love about this next song is that he pursues us until we are found by him until we recognize and acknowledge so when you feel tired and you feel weak and you don't feel like you have anything to give to pursue him know that he's still pursuing you with all of his love because that's how much he loves you relentlessly
coming after me There's no wall you won't kick down Lie you won't tear down Coming after me No There's no shadow you won't light up Or mountain you won't climb up Coming after me There's no wall you won't kick down Or lie you won't tear down Coming after me
Well, good morning again. Uh, we want to start off with our scripture reading. You know, last month we were talking about the knowledge of his will taken out of Colossians. And uh, we used our youth uh, members to announce that or read that those verses over the week, over the month. This month, it's been our college ministry uh, and members of that that have been reading. And the, the title uh, or the theme is Abounding in Hope. So if you would please welcome Milka to come read from Romans for us. Good morning. Today I'm going to read Romans 15, 5 through 6. May the God who gives endurance and encouragement give you the same attitude of mind toward each other than Christ Jesus had, so that with one mind and one voice you may glorify the God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, glorify God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Awesome. Very good scripture. My house is a house of prayer. Of course, not my house, but God's house. Uh, we want to encourage you to be part of that. We have a lot of opportunities. Let me explain them to you. Every Thursday morning at 6 a.m., for those of you that can't sleep or like to get up early, we can uh, meet here at the church for prayer. And for those of you that can sleep and don't like to get up early, at noon on the same Thursday, we also have prayer as well. Every other Friday, we have the coffee lobby prayer from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. in the evening, obviously, and that's every other Friday. And then also Sunday at 10 a.m. or shortly after, we usually meet up here in this area off to my right, to your left, and we have prayer for the service. So there's lots of opportunities to pray. And guess what? You can actually pray other than that, you can pray at home by yourself, too. The Lord says that's okay. We have something new starting. COG University. Classes are going to start April 23rd, and I believe that's next week, right? Awesome. So there'll be like two rotations of classes. The first one will go from five to six, and then the second rotation will be six to seven. Uh, I noticed when I walked in out in the lobby, there is a sign-up table and kind of a brief description of the different classes that are being offered, ranging from children all the way to adults. So check that out. April 30th, couple weeks away, International Sunday. <laughs> so go ahead and invite friends and neighbors. And if you have something you want to share, Go ahead and contact the office, and they can arrange to get that set up for you. Mother's Day, going out a little bit further, May 14th, we're preparing a very special service. So please come expecting and invite friends and family for that as well. And there is a side note on that. Mother's Day it goes along with the women's ministry. And there is a meeting this Thursday at 7 p.m., and they have a guest speaker talking about nutrition. Yeah, that's a good one, right? And all about God's take on eating and taking care of the body that God has given us. So that's important. Now, Brother Yasia, are you here today? All right, come on up. Brother Yasia is going to go ahead and take care of the offering and prayer for that. Pray the Lord. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Oh, the last song said, there is no wall, there is no barrier that God cannot break through. And I know he can break through all financial barriers. So it is time that we give to the house of the Lord with a cheerful giving. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you. You have brought us here together as a family to worship you and to give according to your will. Help us as we give cheerfully that these finances or whatsoever we will be giving will be used for the intended purpose to grow your work in the ministry. Father, we thank you and we bless those that we gave and those that we not gave. 
Father, we know you're going to open doors of opportunity of finances that we all will have the breakthrough that will be cheerfully able to give to the manifestation of your work through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Did you want to invite the people to come up and give? <laughs> Sorry, you can come out and give now. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Don't sit now. Come. All right, we got the box up here. Come on up. Look at this. Look at the young ones doing this. This is a great habit to get them into, man. I'll tell you what. You cannot outgive God. It's amazing. It's just absolutely amazing to me. So. Uh, we have one more thing for you. I think we'll wait just, just a minute here. Kind of get this. You know what? It's a good thing when we're slowing the service up because quite a few people have come up to give, right? Yeah, Amen. Amen. That's awesome. So, we're just about finishing up the line. Let's go ahead and present this. And we have a video that we want to share with you. So, I think you're going to enjoy it. Although, I don't know for sure because I don't really know what the video is. I can guess, though. And then, after the video, the children will be dismissed for their classes. Uh, youth are in? In. Youth are in. But the children in the grade school will be dismissed. And we'll go from that. Bring on the video, brother. Hey COG fam, so good to see you. These are your monthly video announcements. That's right, they're the same announcements that you would get otherwise, but they're on video, so they were more exciting that way. So stay tuned, we're excited to bring you some new activities. God bless you. So we are excited to open up the doors before service at 10 a.m. to begin prayer together collectively. We know that we're called to be a house of prayer and in continuation with all that God's been doing, we're excited to be able to urge you and invite you to come join us and just begin to prepare the atmosphere for what the Lord wants to do each Sunday morning. So just a reminder, Sunday morning, 10 a.m. We look forward to seeing you there. April 23rd, that's a Sunday. Mark your calendars because that's the beginning of COG University being hosted here at Covenant of Grace. Now keep in mind that even though we have quite a few classes, space is limited, so you need to sign up. So make sure you reach out, you go and find what classes are done, which one calls and tugs up your heart, but sign up because space is limited and we're starting on April 23rd. Today is March 7th. I'm being held captive against my will. <laughs> this is not supposed to move. Okay, that's enough. Good morning again. <laughs> okay, one more announcement. So starting about the middle of May, we are going to be having the services recorded in Spanish and... French, two languages, and that will be available live on Facebook, but also if you want to catch up later, you can go to the YouTube and you can catch it in either Spanish, English, or French. So that's pretty cool. Hey, a reminder to the, uh, and I don't know if they can hear me, but a reminder to the worship team, I'm going to talk a little louder, worship team, um, calling all worship team. At the end of the service, they're going to be coming up doing one more song. Help me out. King of my heart. And that's at the end of the service. Okay. So at that point, we got the kids all dismissed. I want to invite my good friend and my brother in the Lord, Brother Pastor Emilio. Amen, amen. Hallelujah. God is good, Amen. You can ask me to excuse my voice a little bit today. I'm a little raspy. The 
Moist wanted to go out this week, and thank God it's a little bit better. And uh, so you're going to have to cheer for me when I want to cheer. You cheer for me, okay? Amen? Amen. Can I get a practice real quick? Amen? Amen. There we go. Thank you. You're going to have to help me out a lot. (laughs) Thank you. Yeah, I need tea here. We're not promoting the coffee shop yet, but thank you. (laughs) Amen. Do you feel the presence of God here this morning? I don't know, but God was asking me, when was the last time you broke down with the Lord? When was the last time you really spent that time and you needed just to cry out to the Lord? And say, Lord, I need to spend that time with you. I just, uh, I, I just need to just sit down and just feel you, Lord God, this morning. And just fill me up, Lord God, that I may be broken. Amen. And God was just reminding me this morning. And, and I think God wants to share that this morning with all of us. But it's up to you or you're going to make yourself available. Amen. And God's going to show us a couple of lessons, a few steps out. It's going to help us to get back on track with them. Or maybe it's just, uh, just to get that, that, it's just that breakdown and that relation and that time with the Lord. And say, Lord, fill me on this morning. We serve a very awesome, loving God. Amen. 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 We got to serve an awesome, we serve a mighty, awesome, loving God. And we're going to see it in the word of God. Do you still believe that the word is alive this morning? Do you still believe that the word is changing lives this morning? And it's kind of, it wants to do the work inside of each and one of us. But we got to desire it. We got to be hungry for it. We talked about how Jesus is pursuing us constantly. He's breaking down doors. He's breaking down barriers. He's breaking down things around us that he may reach us where we're at. The matter of the situation or where you fell, God says, I want to meet you there. I'm not forgotten about you. And we're going to be talking about, and I just want to let you know, with God, it is never too late. And we're talking about a post-resurrection miracle that is filled with truths and filled with lessons that God wants to show each and one of us. He is urgent on this, and he wants to, us to catch up. So a couple of days, a, a couple of weeks ago, um, Pastor preached on and Jesus riding into the town of Jerusalem on a donkey, right? The Almighty God coming into that place and coming in on a donkey, very humble, the King of Kings. Then he goes on a cross of the week after we talk about the resurrection Sunday and the Lord gave himself up for us. Again, he humbled himself for all our our sins were poured on him. He humbled himself and says, I'm going to take the sin for you. That was the heart of the father expressing it through the son. Amen. And the Lord is not done. He wants to keep on doing on this morning. Like I said, God wants to break out something in us this morning. Let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, for being so good to us. Lord, we thank you, Lord, just for being here this morning and that you opened the way, Father God, that we may come before your house and your throne, Father God, just to say, thank you, Lord God. Lord God, that you speak to our hearts and our minds, Lord. And Lord God, that we, Lord God, toss all things aside that are in the way, Lord God, or a stumbling block, Father God, or a distraction on this morning, Lord God. Lord God, may everything be shut off, Lord God, and that we may focus only on you, Lord God. And if our heart is far this morning, Lord, may you tug on our hearts, Father God. Don't leave us there where we're at, Father God. Tug on us, Lord. Make us uncomfortable this morning, Lord, that you show us how much you desire to love us and to be with us, Father, on this morning in the name of Jesus. Amen. So let's set up the stage a bit what happened here on this day of the resurrection. John 20, verse 19 to 21, if you want to go there with me. John chapter 20, verse 19 to 21. And then we're going to jump on to the same book. God's going to be expressing his love right here. And it says, then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled, For the fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in the midst and said to them, peace be with you. I just want to declare that to somebody today this morning. Peace be with you. When he said this, he showed them his hands, his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. 
So Jesus, verse 21 says, so Jesus said to them again, peace to you. As the Father has sent me, I also send you. Wow. Isn't that a great word to hear this morning? He says, first of all, peace be upon you. Shalom. As the Father has sent me, I'm going to send you. Wow, the creator, the king of kings, the one that took our place on the cross says, I'm going to send you. It's very significant here. And now that they are commissioned, and verse 22 says, and when he has said this, he breathed on them. He breathed, he put his breath on them and said to them, receive the Holy Spirit. I think this morning God's going to be breathing on some of us this morning. If we're available to receive, God's going to be breathing on a lot of us on this morning. If we receive, we're going to receive what God wants to give us through the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. Their new birth experience, they were filled with the Holy Spirit, speaking in other tongues, sometimes later in the upper room, as it was recorded in Acts 2. But at this point, they are now born of the Spirit. They've just come to believe in him after the resurrection. So breathe, so he breathed on them and he says, receive the Holy Spirit again, something extremely significant. So they've been commissioned and sent out. They conceived new birth. Jesus said, receive the Holy Spirit. They've been given the spirit of reconciliation. Whoa. And we're going to be looking at this through the whole story as we go on this message. The spirit of reconciliation, how Desperately, he wants to reconcile us back onto him. John 21, 1 to 14. And if you want to go there with me. In John chapter 21, 1 through 14. After these things, after these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples at the Sea of Tiberias. And in this way, he showed himself. Simon Peter, Thomas, called the twin, Nathaniel of Cana and Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two others of his disciples were together. Simon Peter said to them, I am going fishing. They said to him, we are going with you also. They went out and immediately got into the boat, and that night they caught nothing. And when the morning had come, Jesus stood on the shore, yet the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. And Jesus said to them, children, have you any food? And they answered, no. And he said to them, cast the net on the right side of the boat, and you will find some. So they cast, and now they were all not able to draw in it because of the multitude of fish. Therefore, the disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, it is the Lord. Hallelujah, he recognized, amen, who was there. And when Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put, out, put on his outer garment, for he had removed it, and plunged into the sea. But the, older, the other disciples came to, the, came to him in the little boat, for they were not far from the land, and about 200 cubits, dragging in the net with fish. Then as soon as they had come to land, they saw a fire, coals there, and fish laid on it, and bread. Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish which you have just caught. Simon Peter went up and dragged the net to the land, full of large fish, 153 fish. And although there were, there were so many, the net was not broken. Jesus said to them, come and eat breakfast yet none of the disciples dared ask him who are you knowing that it was the lord jesus then came and took and her and took the bread and gave it to them and likewise the fish this is now the third time jesus jesus showed himself to the disciples after he was raised from the dead now this sign is unique when compared to other seven miracles or signs that were also recorded because this one happened after the resurrection. It's the only one that happened after Jesus was raised from the dead and they are in Galilee and Peter says, I'm going fishing. Now he wasn't just saying, look, I'm going out and catching dinner. 
Okay, guys? No. He wasn't saying, you know what? I'm just going to go out and chill a bit on the boat. I want to unwind. I'm going to throw out a line and see if I catch anything. No, in the Greek language, it's an infinitive verb form. Peter literally said, I'm going back to fishing. I'm going back to my old job. I'm going fishing and going to continue fishing. And I'm going to go fishing from now on. And the disciples said to him, were you, were you going, we're going with you. And Peter and the other said, the disciples are ready to desert the calling and the command of Christ all together. Now, as we previously read and the first appearance was on Resurrection Sunday, it says no further appearance till eight days later for the benefit of Thomas. And evidently, after the second appearance, the disciples returned to Galilee. We need to remember that they were Galileans, so they went back to Galilee for a reason. eh? That's where their homes were at. Sometimes those things call us back. They were only visitors in Jerusalem for the Passover season. It was completely natural for them to return into their native province. Especially since on the right of his betrayal, on the night of his betrayal, Jesus said to them in Mark 4, 28 says, But after I have been raised, I will go before you in Galilee. So in some way, they were going to do what supposedly what God told them to do. And they were going back to Galilee also because it was their home, their native town. And after the resurrection, an angel had given the woman this message in Mark 16, 7. It says, but go tell the disciples and Peter that he is going before you, before you into Galilee. Therefore, you will see him as he said, as he said to you. You know what? I want to stop there. I feel like God is speaking to somebody and saying that God is going before you and that he will see him if you seek him on this morning. I think you've been seeking him during this week. And you've been seeking him in a way that you really want to have an encounter with the Lord. And the Lord saying, you know what, I'm going to meet you where you're at. And it continues, and they, they have a promise from Jesus. He's going before them, and they were going to see him. And they're imagining they are going to resume, you know, the former days of fellowship. And the former days of ministry, how it used to be. They got to be excited and, and you know, they were talking excitedly as they were walking along the road. Maybe even, you know, occasionally break out into praise and worship as they were going home. It's like, hallelujah, we're going to go back to what God was going to be calling us and in the ministry and we're going to be working for him. And then they are going because we're going to go see Jesus. And they arrive finally in Galilee and there's no sign of the Savior. Day after day passed, and still there was no Savior. A group of seven of them seemed to have clung together, being led by Peter, waiting for Jesus to reappear. But nothing happens. No Jesus. Their singing turned into questioning. Hallelujah. How many of those happened this week, maybe, or this month, huh? Their joy turned into discouragement. And every day ended in a disappointment until finally one day Peter stands up and says, I'm going fishing. I'm not waiting anymore. And the others joined him. There they were out on the boat, each man his torch. That's how they fished at night and they caught nothing. All they had were empty nets. Family life is very outside every outside of the will of God is not good. (laughs) Now Jesus told them to wait for him in Galilee. But waiting can be the hardest thing for a child of God to do. Amen? Sometimes it's hard. Sometimes we are so impatient. We want things now. We hate to wait. What is that word, eh? Wait. (laughs) How soon, right? Jesus says, I'm coming back soon, right? That's that word, soon. And everybody is pounding on that word, soon? How long is that? You want me to wait? How long is that? 
but wait we must. Character is developed as we wait. Our trust in God and his word is put to the test as we wait. And it can be so hard. King David says in Psalm 69, 3, it says, I am weary with my crying. My throat is dry. My eyes fail while I wait for my God. But again, wait we must. Are you waiting for Jesus on this morning? Psalms 27, 14 says, wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart. Do you need to be strengthened in your heart this morning? God will do that. Wait on the Lord this morning. Wait on him. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Now, Peter was a very impulsive man, right? We can tell. That was his nature. That was sometimes not dependable. He was a subject of great uh, gust of enthusiasm, but it seemed to swing the other way also almost as quickly. I mean, he's on the boat, right? Uh, he's uh, bad-tempered and, and bad-spirited, and all of a sudden, when he hears the Lord, he, he jumps into the water and he swims, right? Leaves the other guys alone and says, I'm going to go with the Lord. And that was the way he was. <laughs> He's always that way in some ways. And you, that many people who, who kindle quickly and with enthusiasm, there's a lot of people we know like that, can often fall into depression also that quickly. And I can see Peter excited after the resurrection, but waiting for Christ to appear, waiting and waiting. He becomes sullen and depressed. Day passes into until finally he falls into despair. You know, Peter was a fisherman. And so whose business is on the waters, never, they never lose their love for the sea. You know, Peter had left his nets. We got to pay attention on this part. He had left his nets and his boat when he decided to follow Jesus. But they were still there in his hometown where he went back to. He hadn't sold them, nor he had burned them. Like, what are you talking about? Well, let's go into it. You see, there was Elijah, when he called Elijah, Elijah burned all of his plowing equipment to follow the Lord. He knew he wasn't coming back to that part, that area from where God called him. Whatever it is that you need to burn, here we're going to see right now, it says, he would rather, he would never plow on the field of his father Shaphat again. But Peter, he had left his boats, his nets, and all his fishing gear right there where, it was, where he left it. But when he returned, everything was still there. And he got to, you know, he was a fisherman, so he got the, the smell of the lake, you know, and he started smelling. He goes, wow. So I want to, I want to, I want to get over there again. He started seeing the seagulls and everything. He goes, you know what? I want to get out there and just start fishing. So he bought, thought about all those nights he was under the stars when he was uh, excited and he pulled the nets full of fish, and the love of his old craft swept over him, and he wanted to go back to fishing. And he said, "I'm going back to fishing. It's what I know best." He gave up all the ideas of catching men and decided to go back to fishing fish. And God had called them to fish what? Man. And I believe he was in danger of denying the cause of Christ. His love for Christ was in question. Hallelujah. John 21, 15. It says, so when they had eaten breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me more than these? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, feed my lambs. Hallelujah. He said to him a second time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? Let the word resonate in you right now. You know, I always, when Jesus says this, 
He is at the same time he mentioned to Nathaniel, James, and John, and Thomas, and says, Peter, do you love me more than these guys? But it's not what Jesus said he did, right? Jesus motioned at the 153 large fish flopping on the shore. And he pointed at the boat and at some other nets and some other fishing gear. And he said, Peter, do you love me more than these? Because if you study the gospel, you'll find that it was not the first time Peter had abandoned the call. Mark 1, which corresponds also with Luke 4, and you need to compare the two. Jesus comes to him and calls him and said, follow me and I'll make you fishers of what? Men. And Peter leaves his boat, leaves his nets and decides to follow Jesus, but it's short-lived. We go to Mark 2, which corresponds to Luke 5. And so where Jesus goes out to the circuit preaching, comes back to Capernaum. And the history tells us that there was about 4,000 boats on the Sea of Galilee. There was about 4,000 boats right there. 4,000 boats. And but Jesus decides to choose the one that belongs to who? Simon Peter. God was after Peter for a reason. There was a purpose and was a calling and Peter that he had to bring out of him. Amen? And out of all the four thousand, he chose them. God is choosing you today. Remember that. That he is calling you. He called you out for a purpose and a reason. It doesn't matter if you're qualified where you're at. God says, I need you for the kingdom. I want to use you. There is a purpose I want to develop in you. Amen? Amen? But he says, launch out to the deep and catch for a catch of fish. And he says, Master, we toiled all night and we caught nothing. He hadn't been out preaching with Jesus. He hadn't followed Jesus. He hadn't obeyed the call. He had gone back to fishing. But when Peter went on and said, because he knew he had encountered Jesus, you see. He had seen the miracle that had happened with Jesus. This is the stuff that sometimes we forget, the encounter with Jesus. Sometimes we forget the miracle that God has done. You see, he has seen his mother-in-law been healed. He has seen people in his own village been healed. And if we believe and hang on to that, and we remember those things when the Holy Spirit brings it to remembrance, and I think this morning he's doing that in a lot of us. He's bringing those things that he has done. He has given you victory in certain things that you didn't think it was possible. He made a way through when you didn't see a way through. There was a sickness that you can't get out of and he helped you. There was a place in another nation you can't get out and he brought you here. Didn't he do that? So he's just reminding us. Why? Because... He said, nevertheless, at your word, I'll let down the nets. At your word, Lord God, I'm going to trust you, and I'm going to pray for that person that needs prayer this morning. At your word, I'm going to pray for that one person that needs to be set free because I've seen it done before, Lord God. Amen? At your word, Lord God. And they did, and caught so many fish, they filled up two boats. They almost begin to sink, and, and Peter falls, into his, falls to his feet and says, Depart from me, Lord, I am a sinful man. See, Peter knew his own heart and said, You do not want somebody like me, Jesus. I've already failed you. We just started and I already practically denied you. Just please leave me, Jesus. Find someone else. That's what he was saying. And Jesus graciously issues the call again to, to Peter. He says, don't be afraid. From now on, you will catch men. And Peter does great. For the next several years of his ministry, he's with Christ. He's left with the nets. He's left with the boat. He left the boat. And he left his fishing gear until after the resurrection, Jesus has breathed on him. He received the Holy Spirit. He's seen the nails on his scarred hands. And he has seen where the spear went through his side. And after the resurrection, he says, I'm going back to fishing. 
Jesus says to Peter, Peter, do you love me more than these? And it's interesting when Jesus said, do you love me? He used a word we all find so familiar. It's agape. Do you agape me? Hallelujah. It's that love that God gives and only he can give. It's the love that he pours out into our hearts via the Holy Spirit. Where it says, God so loved what? The world. That's how great his love is and still is. It's a self-sacrificial love that puts others first. A love he gives when you are all messed up or where you have messed up, yet he is reaching out to you because he loves you that great. Amen. Peter, do you agape me? And Peter responds to Jesus in the verse 21, 15. He says, yes, Lord, you know I love you. And Peter responds with a different word. See, Peter says, you know, I phileo you. I'm fond of you. That's what Peter's saying. How many of us really tell Jesus, I love you, when, with a really true word of agape instead of, I phileo you, Lord. Jesus said, Peter, do you know me? Are you willing to put me first? He said, if you love me, you'll keep my what? Commands in the gospel. Peter said, yeah, Lord, I'm, I'm, I'm fond of you. Jesus says, feed my lambs. And we go to verse 21, 16. He said again the second time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love or agape me? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know I love you. Meaning again, phileo, I fond of you. I'm a fond of you, Jesus. And he said, ten my sheep. And then he said I'll get to him a third time, son of Jonah, you are fond of me. Do you phileo me? That's the way Jesus dropped it back onto him. He dropped it down to his level. Okay, we're going to go there. And when he brought it back like that, he said, Peter was grieved because he, he said to him a third time, do you love me? He said to him, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. So that's the question God is making to us this morning. And Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. Peter, you are called to ministry to catch men, to minister to people, not to catch fish. And I believe Peter is like a lot of us. I, I can relate with him in so many ways that I have messed up. In one way, we're familiar with the frailty of our hearts. We are familiar with our own failings and the promises that we haven't kept and, and the things that we have intended to do, you know, for the kingdom and maybe haven't fulfilled those things. And I think Peter said, Lord, when you own my heart, my own heart condemns us. When our own home condemns us, you are greater than our hearts. You know all things. I feel like I feel you. I want to agape you. Let's change our language this morning. Amen. We're not be to phileo God, but to agape the Lord. But you know what? The Lord wasn't done with Peter and he's not done with us. Amen. Thank God. <laughs> Praise be his name. And it says, now I'm sure if it seemed to Peter and to the others that Jesus had forgotten them, but he hadn't. It may have seen that he had forgotten his promise, but he hadn't. And he hadn't forgotten or abandoned you. And he hasn't forgotten the promise that is spoken over your heart. Jesus' delay was on purpose. There's some delays going on in our lives right now, but that's on purpose. You see, God wants to build something up. Amen. Hallelujah. He had gone before them in Galilee. He was already there, but he has chosen not to reveal himself in order to teach them a couple of le lessons. He wanted to learn, wanted them to learn the lessons of patience. There's that word again, connected to wait, right? Patience. And the necessity to wait on him and to continue and trust in him. And even when it seemed nothing was happening, they needed to learn some things about themselves and that without him, they can do what? Nothing. How did they pull the, the nets the first time? Empty. And I know that every time we, he drew, they drew the net up before it even broke to the surface, they knew they would have nothing. 
They tried every place, every method that they know, but caught nothing, not a single sardine or catfish, whatever it may be. But they tried on their own strength. Don't, don't try it on your own strength. What a dark night it must have been. They, they had been depressed before when they went fishing. They were 10 times more depressed now because there were no fish now. Instead of relieving the, t- the tension and depression, it only added to it. Listen, if you are truly saved and you're going back to your old life, you may not be easy or unpleasant as pleasant as it seems because our old lives is empty. That's the state of a backslider. It's empty. It's got one foot on the rowboat and one foot on the dock. You're not fully enjoying God, everything that God wants to give you because you're not living all everything that he wants you to live for him. So it's ruined. You can't enjoy lifestyle of sin anymore. It's not like that. And if you're away from Christ today, nobody needs to tell you this, but God wants to bring you back. Let me tell you. Now, they hadn't seen Jesus, but Jesus had seen them. This is another word that the Lord gave me as we were worshiping. And even uh, the other day we were praying that he says, the Lord says again. I don't know why he wants to say it again, but he says, I see you where you're at. He says, I see you. See, Jesus had seen them. He watched them launched out. He's seen you where you've been trying to do. He watched them light their torches, trying to light the way where they were going. He watched them drop their nets again and again. And he thinks he's just sent out a little thought from the mind of the Lord, right? And he goes, a little thought from the Lord. He says to the fish, fish, <clears throat> please f- swim away from the boat for now. I'm going to teach these guys a little bit of lesson. See, he is the Lord. He can speak to creation. Amen. Job 37, 6 says this. For he says to the snow, fall on the earth likewise to the gentle rain and the heavy rain of his strength. And the clouds do what he commands them, right? And the sea and the creature therein obey his voice. And very stars above obey his command. Family, he has all the power and authority. Over everything, every, every creation. I don't know if you remember when Jerry was here visiting us before that the drought was over in Payson. Amen. Now they can't stop all the rain they're getting so much. But I remember he came in and said, you know what, let's pray. And then what, how do we do in prayer? We pray and then get the umbrellas ready because we're going to do it by faith and we're going to believe that God's going to do it. Amen. So when you pray and believe in God, believing in him at his word, get ready, whatever you got to get ready. If you have a loved ones that are going to come to the church, get the chairs ready for them. If the rain's going to come or you're believing for something, let God tell you how to get ready for that. Everything obeys the Lord. And when he called to them and he says, <laughs> just to stick it to him still, he says, hey, have you caught anything? And they say, No. Well, drop the nets on the right side. And, he, and so Jesus sends out another thought, right? And he goes to the fish. Goes, okay, everybody, listen up, fish. He goes, I want the biggest, fattest ones of you fishes to swim into that net now. And the biggest and fattest fish in the lake fought to see who would be the first one to make it into the net. Listen, Jesus is a faithful to his promises. And a delay is not a denial. But you must learn to wait. You have to wait through the foggy and sunless days where there's little encouragement, where it seems that God has abandoned you or forgotten you because, family, he has not done that. His eye is upon you. Amen? Amen. He knows everything that you are going through. He knows the hard places. He knows the dark places. And you might be the one of those, tonight, of the, of those night seasons that, you sit, that we sit in the house of the worship together. On, I'm sorry. And you might be in one of those night seasons as we sit here in the house of worship together on this morning. But let me tell you, I don't think it will be much longer until you see the Savior standing on the shore. And you'll see your dawn breaking on this morning. For God is faithful. Faithful at his word. He says, just hold on a little bit longer. He says, wait just a little bit longer. 
there's something I'm working out in here. Just please wait. Sit on me. Sit on my word. Sit on prayer time. Just sit a little bit longer. I want to get a hold of you where you're at. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. It says, well, there is nothing else. <clears throat> Hallelujah. <clears throat> John 21, 9. I'm going to read this part really quick. And it says that when they got to the shore, I love this part. This is something I got to think is preparing for us this morning. He says, they got to the shore. There was a fire of coals with the fish laid on it and some bread already. See, who lit the fire? Who got the fish? Who got the bread and, and cooked the fish? The Lord himself did that. Because he loved us so much, right? Jesus knew how to cook, okay? Just want to let you know. It's okay for guys to know how to cook. We cook good too. Imagine the risen Savior in all his glory. He had defeated death glorified body he is the king of the universe and he's making breakfast for his disciples he is down on his knees blowing the coals right <sighs> come on <sighs> come on cook fish cook he puts the fish on then he makes them sit down warm up warm up guys i know it's been cold out there come on sit down and he feeds them and after he fed them, he goes, here, Peter, has some more fish. Nathaniel has some bread. James, John, Thomas, come on, hurry up. There's plenty of fish here, too, for us. The Savior of the world who conquered hell, death, and the grave is serving his disciples. He is doing the same thing on this morning. I believe God is serving us. His word. Now he's going to correct them. Yes. They do need to be dealt with. They have forsaken a call, but you know what? He realizes that they're cold first, and they're wet, and they're hungry. So before he deals with them, before he corrects them, he endeavors them to put the spirit back in them. He gets them warmed up and gets some food into them, gets them dried off. And our Lord and Savior really teaches a lesson through this. So when we're going to sit down with somebody, I believe that we probably we can probably feed them something good first before we knock them over the head with something, the truth, right? But let's sit down with them and eat. Amen. <laughs> that is why Jesus is the master. Now, why did he do this for them? Why did he serve them? Why did he correct them? Because what? He loved them. He loves us. And I want to tell you this morning that he loves all of us. And he will not leave you, not forsake you either. You are backslidden and he loves you. If you've been unfaithful to him, he loves you where you're at. And he will not leave you nor forsake you right there in that place that he doesn't want you at. Now he rebukes Peter, then amazingly he issues a call upon Peter again. In the last two words of verse 19, he says, Peter, follow me. And he did it again. Luke 5, when he abandoned Christ and, call, and the call then, then again. And after that, after the resurrection, Jesus in his mercy. Peter, you are not called to fish. You are not called to fish, fish. He goes, this is what I have called you to do. Follow me. And some might ask, why didn't the net break also when all the fish were on there? Why? There's a certain detail. Why did they mention that the net didn't break, right? Well, it's obviously he doesn't want a single fish to get away. And there's a message in that. You know, if he has caught you, you're secure in his net. He's not going to let go. And if you're away from him on this morning, we're going to get the worship team ready to come up. If you're away from him this morning, listen, it's time for you to come back. He is calling you. This is the story of Peter and the love of God over and over and over 
and over again. He messes up, he gets back up again. And God has mercy on him. And I know God has mercy on me and on all of us because of our shortcomings also. Amen. Isn't God good? He, he decided to put a fire for the disciple that had left their calling and went back fishing. He, he puts a fire, he puts the, some fish and some bread and he invites them over. Hey, come on, get in. Come on, sit down, warm up. Where are you today? Do you need to be warmed up by the fire this morning? Do you need to sit down next to the Savior and just to hear his voice as he speaks to you and says, hey, here's some fish, here's some bread. Wow. I don't know about you, but Jesus is here this morning. And you prayer this morning. You can come up. The altar's open. The altar's open. You want to come up and just say, thank you, Lord Jesus, for preparing that fire for me, even though I have messed up so many times. Lord, thank you for preparing that fish and that bread when I was hungry, that fire when I was cold, and nobody else did anything else but you did, Jesus. And I believe Jesus wants to do that this morning. Amen. Let's get on our feet. Amen. Hallelujah. This uh, is our worship song before we uh, go further this morning, but the altar's still open, and then we're going to make a, another altar call. Amen. Thank you.
us, Father. You're so good, Lord Jesus. Lord God, help us, Father God. Also get rid of our old fishing boats, Father. Our old nets. Any fishing gear, Lord God, that's hindering us or holding us, Father God, let us get rid of it, Father, this morning. Where it is, Father God, whatever stumbling block, Father, may you help us, Father God. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to have my wife join me really quick. <clears throat> She's going to help me uh, do the altar call because my voice is going out, so thank you. And we're going to have Brother Garcia come in and join us, too. Hallelujah. You know, leaving things behind is not easy. We're not going to paint a pretty picture because it costs everything. But it's so worth it. It is so worth it because God will never ask you to leave something that he has not empowered you to be able to do so. And what it seems impossible for us, it is possible in him. It is possible in him. And may I add to that, that there is nothing more precious than what God offers to us. Amen. Hallelujah. So I'm going to invite my brother Garcia. He's going to invite everybody who has not yet accepted the Lord as Savior to come and receive it in your heart. And then from there, we're going to invite everybody that wants to receive more of God to come to the front. Make your way to the front. Amen. Praise the Lord. Just as Pastor Mary has said, the front is open for you to receive the Lord. And God is calling you right now to receive him as your personal savior. So if you have not done that, this is the time. For we know that the end time is here. And it is the time that we need to accept the Lord. It is the time that we need to open our hearts to the Lord. It is need, it is the time that we need to give our whole and whole to God and hold him back to nothing else. So if you have not done this before, I would like to, for you to recite this from the depth of your heart and accept the Lord. Dear Lord, I present to you myself as sinful as I am. For Lord, you are the giver of life and hope. Everything is vanity. But Lord, I present myself because you are worthy. I have nothing to hide and nothing to be ashamed for all that I have. I surrender them to you. Father, I give myself to you. I present myself to you as sinful as I am. If you had never done that before, this is the time that you say this and just walk before the altar of God. He will never be ashamed of you and never be ashamed of him. The time is ripe now that you need to accept Christ as a personal savior if you had never done that before. This is the time. Let us not think about what has happened or what is past. The present is here. Come forth. The Lord is calling you. He's calling you to the altar of prayer. He's calling you to surrender. He's calling you to surrender. As you heard the message, the Lord is calling you. The Lord is good. All the time he's good. His arms are open to receive you. Worthy as you are, filthy as you are, no matter what the situation may be, the Lord is ready. The time is here. Come hold before him. The Lord is good. He will never forsake you, no matter who you are. Lord is good. Yes, Lord. We bless you because you are good. We are not wanted to call upon you for you are saying in your word, 1 John 1 9, if we confess our sin, 
you are faithful and just to forgive us. Forgive us now as we leave your present. You are holy. You are worthy. We give all to you because you are the God of hosts. There is nothing impossible for you. Nations will come and go, but your word will remain steadfast in our hearts. Father, we bless you. We bless you. We want to bless you. Yes. As we close this prayer, there will be prayer teams in the front to pray for you if you have anything special to be prayed for. There will be prayer team here to pray for you. As we come forward, if you need prayer, Come forward and receive your prayer. Don't be ashamed. God is not ashamed of you. He say, come, just as you are, and I will make you whole. Come just as you are. You are my son. You are my daughter. I will never forsake you. I will never turn my ways against you. For the doors are open to receive him. His salvation is free. He's calling upon you today. Come and get the salvation. The freedom that we need. The freedom that we cannot find nowhere. The freedom that we cannot find in government, in person, in individual. But God has that freedom here for you today. You can find it right here. He's waiting for you. These doors are open. Just keep praying. Because the Lord is ready. He is. He is good. Yes, Lord, we know you are good. In every circumstances, Lord, we know you are good. In every situation, Lord, we know you are good. In every trial and temptation, Lord, we know you are good. You are holy. Nation rise against nation, but you are good. Man go against man, but you are still good. We thank you. We want to thank you, Lord. We thank you for your greatness, for your kindness, for your mercy. There is no love greater than you. There is no salvation greater than you. Father, we want to thank you. We want to thank you. And we will now close this service as people stay calm for prayer. Father, we want to thank you for all that you have done for us. For we have seen you raised him from the dead. We know you have raised him with our sins. You have pleaded for us. You are giving your life and cavalry for us. We believe, Lord, that you are the God of hosts. That one day you shall be coming back to receive your people. Father, we want to bless you as we close this service. That you would treasure in our heart and not only closing these doors and closing our hearts when we leave, but opening our hearts to receive you. Opening our eyes to see you. Opening our ears to listen to our calling. Father, we want to bless you. We adore you and everything you have done for us. May this week be a blessed week to each and every one of us. Break through our finances. Bring relief to our heart. Bring relief to the sufferings. Bring relief to the widow. 
the offering is. Bless nations that are wounded. Bless nations that are at war at this time. Bless homes that need your peace. Father, we bless you. We want to bless you. Through your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. good hallelujah and out of respect because they're still ministering in here uh, next week we'll do the recognition for all of the people that help out in the Easter service because there were a lot of people that help out that we wanted to recognize but out of respect of the administration we're not going to do it today <laughs> but everybody's dismissed if worship team if you want to lead us with the last song that'd be wonderful gonna let, never gonna let me down. You're never gonna let, never gonna let me down.